All right, everyone, welcome once again to another ECAL North American and South American tournament. This is a $3,000 prize pool sponsored by Machinima. This is Group Stages Group 1. Today, we're going to be bringing you Dusa taking on Quantic. Quantic today, as you may have noticed, actually using two ringers. And ever since the addition of Brax, it appears that Pain of Gold is not here. And to be totally frank, I'm not even sure who their last player is supposed to be at the moment. I know they used to run with the last hit magic, AK Sorcery, but he is also not going to be in this game. So once again, guys, this is just a best of one. It is great group stages and we're just going to go ahead and wait to see what the picks are going to be from both these teams here i want to thank everybody for joining me today along with blitz for giving me a shout out on his stream so big props to him for sending everyone from his channel over here and yep we're just going to go ahead and wait to see what everybody does but i actually think oh never mind i'm not bugged i was about to panic there but invoker is going to be the first ban out here from deusa so no real shock I think that, uh, actually, we might see less and less Invoker bans as time goes on. But Lycan, however, I believe will still stay in the first six bans for a very, very long time. His push potential and just general teamfight presence is pretty ridiculous. And I don't believe that we'll be seeing him anytime soon, at least in the North and South American scene. <clears throat> and today I will be solo casting, so it's a bit new for me. I don't get to solo cast very much, but when I do, I do like to solo cast Dota 2. Once again, thanks you guys so much for joining me. Just waiting to see what the rest of the first pick phase is going to be. And I'm really interested to see what kind of stuff Quantic's going to pull out because, again, they're missing two of their players. So I'm not sure if they're going to go for a similar style where they kind of just put Korok on that aggressive carry and try to run a really strong laning phase, get him the farm that he needs, and basically try to take over the game during the mid and late game or if they're going to try something different. I know that Iconoclast is Matrim, 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 something like that. I'm pretty sure that's a close pronunciation, but I'm not sure who... Super Joe is. If that's actually the Super Joe from Blitz's stream, then that would be awesome. Darkseer Band going to be coming out here as well from Dusa, followed by a Lone Druid from Quantic. So nothing really too shocking so far. I really like the Darkseer Band in pretty much all cases. Any team from any region essentially has been valuing him very highly. Nobody really wants to play against him anymore. He's just too potent in pretty much any stage of the game. And I think... Last week, I want to say, we were casting a couple of matches in Monthly Madness, and there was a game where there was a Morphling on either team and a Darkseer. And the Morphling was so far the Darkseer wall basically made his illusion kill his own team. It was actually pretty comical. And we are, speaking of, going to see a Morphling ban out here. So taking a step in the right direction against a team like Quantic, banning out one of Korok's more well-known heroes. By the way, Korok drafting this game. That's definitely not something they usually do. I know Panic Gold typically sits in that drafting spot, as Brood will go ahead and round out the last bands here for Quantic. First pick going to be going to Radiant, as it typically does in most of these tournament formats, and first pick is going to be Nature's Prophet, so no real surprise there. Does leave CK wide open, I know Korok is a fan of that. Queen of Pain as well, who's been seeing a large amount of gameplay recently, but they're going to go ahead and go with Chen. Enchantress is still in the pool, by the way, so if Dusa wants to go ahead and pick it up here, they can. Nature's Prophet typically doesn't jungle anyhow. I think uh, MTW is one of the few teams I've actually seen jungle and Nature's Prophet, and it's okay, but I don't know if it's necessarily the best start that you can give to your Furion. Lashrak going to be the second pick out from Quantic, so not taking CK here, a little bit strange. They just want to get their lanes really, really strong. They have the Lashrak pick. Chen's obviously great and pretty much any lineup. He's a great pusher. He hits a stride a lot earlier than Enchantress, too. I think that's why teams definitely favor him over picking up Enchantress in situations like this. Waiting to see what Dusa wants to do here. And with the Nature's Prophet pickup, I remember watching a game the other day. Or actually, I wasn't even watching it. I was casting it, duh. So I was casting a game in Monthly Madness, and we saw a pick of Furion, and then a bunch of very weak laners, I believe PyCat was on there for a tri-cast, if any of you guys happen to catch it, and Furion is a great hero, and he adds a lot of presence during the early and mid phases of the game, he's a great pusher, but he needs help in terms of when he comes to TP to a lane to gank, so picking a Furion in itself is very strong, but he needs an additional stun or some kind of damage output to really solidify kills, and that was something that we saw as I said, that game that we cast, that it just didn't happen. They didn't have the lanes to really kill anybody, even with the Fury on TPing. So hopefully that Dusa doesn't make that similar mistake, as they are going to go with an Enigma here as well. Enigma can be seen in the jungle and lane, just like Fury on. Uh, more often than not, though, we do see him in that jungle role. Typically, people, if they're going to send him to a lane, it's going to be to the long lane or middle. I've seen middle maybe a handful of times in the last couple of weeks. But so far, nothing really too shocking. All these heroes are very top tier. 
I actually am a little bit surprised that we haven't seen CK. And something else, too, that I wanted to hit on just briefly is Windrunner has just completely fallen off in terms of the first, I would say, five or six picks. Most teams just don't pick her up at all anymore, whereas a couple of weeks ago, you couldn't go a game without seeing a Windrunner pick, at least in the like the first two, I would say, third or fourth picks in general, as CK is also going to be rounding out Deuce's first pick phase here. Quanta going to figure out what they want to do, and also one second left on the bonus time from Deuce, so definitely cutting it close. They really want to try to make sure they get as much lane advantage as possible. One thing, too, that's really important about that pickup from Deuce is that now their lanes are going to be totally reliant on getting supports after this point. As it stands right now, they could potentially pick a mid-hero, have the Enigma safely jungle by the Chaos Knight to give him added protection, pick some kind of support to go with him. They could also dual lane mid in this particular situation, send a safe lane solo bottom like a Tinker or something like that. I know we've seen EG pull out that kind of trick before, and it worked really, really well. So getting into the second ban phase here, Venomancer is going to be the first out. Also, last of the first pick phase in its entirety, Tidehunter going to Quantix, so they're definitely not wanting to lack in that team fight department. I know Quantix a team who loves running him in the long lane as well. He definitely is a hero who can do that. He still gets the early game experience, I think, more often than not if he does that. I think they just buy boots first and something like Tangos to prevent himself from dying. He does have a ridiculously high base move speed in general, so it's very, very hard to catch him out unless you have a lot of stuns, but not really sure if that's going to be the role he plays yet in this game, but still overall tied. A very, very potent pick. Waiting to see what Quantic is going to go ahead and ban out here. Only a few picks left until we get into the game. Once again, guys, this is Dusa taking on Quantic. For those of you who are just joining us, my name is Draskal. I'll be doing all of the ECAL casting pretty much for the group stages and onward, if I'm not mistaken. Typically, I do have a co-caster, but today I am not graced with that, unfortunately. So you guys have to deal with me talking the entire time. I'm sure it's a major bummer. As Shadow Demon also gets taken out here from Quantic. I love the Shadow Demon ban too, especially when heroes like Chaos Knight are on the other team. Chaos Knight's a hero who, while he can be a carry, his damage output in earlier phases of the game, just simply because of the item builds you typically go, like Drum, BKB, Armlet, things like that, they all add a tremendous amount of early game damage, and partnered with things like Soul Catcher and Disruption as well, that combo kills pretty much any hero. Even heroes like Tide, who have a significant amount of base HP, are susceptible to ganks like that, so I really love the fact that they went and banned him out. Also. We're going to see VS taken out. Crystal Maiden also picked up by Deuza, so there's one of the supports that they definitely did need here. See, I'm still very, very strong. Maybe not quite as potent as Shadow Demon would have been with that CK, as I was just explaining, but still nonetheless a very, very good support. And there is Windrunner once again falling back into the second pick phase. Not quite as highly val valued as we used to see here. Beastmaster, the last ban out from Quantic. And I kind of went in a weird order there, but I was kind of just trying to go with things as I saw them. Makes it easier, but... Only two picks left until we go ahead and get into this game. And I'm still thinking that Deuce is going to need a mid here. They could send Enigma mid or top lane or Furion. They are interchangeable in their roles. They're just so open-ended. And there is the Tinker. Okay. So we might see a safe lane Tinker and possibly a dual lane mid with Furion top and Enigma jungle. It is a definite possibility here. We could also just see a dual lane bottom to keep the CK extra safe with a Tinker just in middle lane. Fury on top, and of course Enigma is still going to be in that jungle. For Quantic, their lanes are a little bit harder to predict. Uh, at this current point in time, since Paint of Gold isn't playing, I kind of want to shy away from the fact that that's going to be a mid Windrunner or a mid Lashrac. I know those are kind of his go-to heroes. So as it stands right now, I think that they're probably going to want a mid of their own, and I don't believe that Korok has a hero yet either. I don't think I've seen him play pretty much any of these heroes aside, maybe a Windrunner, very seldom. And we're going to go ahead and wait to see what that's going to be. They're finally eating into their bonus time, by the way. Quantic has been much faster about their picks this game so far than Dusa. I really want to see what they're going to go with here, because Morphling, again, is taken out. They could go with something like a Queen of Pain if they want to rely on more burst damage. But as it stands right now, Dusa's lineup has a lot to hold down a Queen of Pain. Even her mobility is going to be greatly hindered by things like Malefus, Chaos Bolt, and the... Frostbite as well from Crystal Maiden, not to mention just the sheer damage output they have as well. It's really, really hard to deal with. This looks almost like the EG lineup from Dusa that we saw a couple of days ago in the finals versus Complexity for the Monthly Madness Season number 2, where they had a Tinker and a Death Prophet, and between March of the Machines, Crypt Swarm, and Exorcism, you just simply couldn't ever engage into them. It was just so much AoE damage that you basically tried to walk in, and you died. So... We'll see what Quantic's going to go ahead and do to react to that kind of style. It is similar, maybe not quite the same magnitude of damage output, but I feel like they're kind of going for the same idea. And man, Quantic sure is taking their time here. Really trying to think about what the last pick is going to be. 
They could even go something like OD as well. I think OD actually is pretty darn good against CK. His orb obviously owns the Phantasm Illusions pretty badly. And just in general, the hero's damage output is really, really high. And they have a lot to protect him too. They have the Chen, they have the Lashrak, they have Tide Ravage, they have a lot of stuns, crowd control abilities, and heals as well. So I believe that that could be a possible pick, but no, they're going to go Night Stalker instead. All right, so I guess that Quantic definitely wants to play this aggressive in the earlier stages of the game. I really don't think that Quantic is going to want to take this past the 30 or 35 minute mark because honestly, even heroes like Tinker scale pretty darn well if they get a sizable amount of farm. So we're just waiting for everyone to go ahead and pick up their heroes here. And we will get in the game. And I'm actually going to go ahead and fix my overlay now before I forget. Haha! -ha. Okay, there we go. So it is going to look a little goofy for a couple of seconds here, but as soon as everybody gets their heroes, it should be just fine. Once again, guys, thanks so much for joining me for this game. One of my very, well, I shouldn't say first solo cast, but one of the very few solo casts that I actually have done. My name is Drasko. I'll be casting pretty much all the EKL games for you guys in the future. So we're going to go over the players really fast here for Quantic. We're going to have Stand and Super Joe. Not sure if that's a Super Joe from Blitz's stream, but if it is, shout out to him. I saw his pudge. Probably not the best. Hopefully his Lush Rack is a little bit better. Can have Brax playing on the Windrunner. Korok going to be taking up the reins on Night Stalker. Iconoclast, AK, Matrim going to be playing on our Chen. And finally, Mikey for Quantic, rounding it out, going to be on Tide. Then for Dusa, we have Leash. I think that's how you say it. I'm sure somebody in the chat's going to correct me in like two seconds and be like, no, noob, this is how you say it. But that's fine. Elwind playing on the Tinker. Stand in Fun going to be on Crystal Maiden 616 on Nature's Prophet. And finally, F4L going to be playing on Enigma. So. Wouldn't be American Dota in general without a pause, so the game obviously going to be paused here. Who actually paused it? Okay, so it was due. So they were the ones who requested that this match start 30 minutes later. I apologize again for that, guys. I brought the stream up a little bit too early, but you guys were awesome and stuck around in the chat, talked with me a bit, so definitely appreciate that. And the game is underway. Going to find out what the lanes are going to be here. So it looks like Brax was looking like he was going to head to the long lane, which is definitely not surprising in this situation. So that means that it is going to be a standard support tide. And are they going to be sending Korok mid here? That's the real question. I guess they are, considering the fact that tide is already going top. Has those sentries bought already? Prematurely wanting to counter ward to make sure that he can pull, get the biggest advantage that he possibly can in that top lane. Pretty standard stuff. So you see him making her way towards the river here. Maybe looking to do some early warding to try and avoid any of that countering. But if he puts it on the high ground, there's a very good chance that this is just going to get straight up countered. Uh, this is a very, very common ward spot. Some people like to place it lower, because if you put a sentry on top of this hill, you can only really see about that much space. I'm not sure if you guys can see the box on the screen, but that's about how much you can see. So if you don't put it right on top, it still can live for a little while, unless somebody on your team can give them vision. And I don't believe that any of them actually can, as this Treant is scouting out this top jungle here. And we're going to see a lane ward go down as well. So they really want to try to pick up this Virion. 616 is going to be struggling a lot. And I'm assuming that we're going to be seeing a farming Lashrak. So I really like that choice. Lashrak is a hero who I feel adds a lot more to a composition. If he gets things like Bloodstone, BKB, could just walk into a team fight, do a ridiculous amount of damage with Edict, Splitter, Pulse Nova. Pretty much all of his abilities are nukes. So his whole job is to basically stay alive as long as he can, get that damage output going, and just be an overall threat to Deuce's lineup here. Bottom lane, we are going to see a safe lane CK with the CM as well, so they are going to opt to put the Tinker mid. And a Tinker against the Night Stalker. The Night Stalker is probably going to do fairly well here. He did opt to start with a Stout Shield as well, so that's going to help him with the right-click auto-attack damage. He's not going to be really too worried about dying in this situation, as Elwin's actually playing fairly far up, and wow, the conversions are actually being used to help deny the wave mid in addition to that first conversion that he did already. See some auto-attacks going off. No real major damage being dealt here. But I think that Korok is going to be A-OK -okay once he gets his bottle up. 616 trying to find any spot that he can to even gather experience at this point. It's just going to be so rough on him. They really didn't even have to counter ward. Anytime there's a solo top, uh, you typically won't have this camp warded, especially. You can pretty much just pull this all the time. So CM used the... Uh, did he even use the other ward? I don't think he did. Nope, he still has it on him. So he didn't use that other ward. So he's going to go ahead and keep it for his rainy day fun. But they can't see the rune anyway, so I suppose it doesn't matter too much. This middle lane's actually getting quite pushed out here by Korok. 4 and 2 right now for the Tinker. 3 and 1 for Night Stalker. As we already see a smoke up here by Tidehunter and Chen. They have a Centaur as well, so this could be a feasible first blood here. They do have double slow. Should allow 
the Centaur to get in range to throw out the Stomp, and Enigma is nowhere nearby to help this. The only problem is Elwin's actually in a very, very good spot. The creep wave standing here is really to his advantage. As we can see, Tide kind of juking behind the creeps here. Trying to figure out... Oh, he's actually going to go straight in from the back. There's a laser. The Void goes off. Here comes Tide. He gets thrown out of Invis. And now the Centaur Stomp will go off. But the March on the Machine is doing quite a bit of damage. There's already a TP mid. Elwin's going to go down here. First Blood goes to Night Stalker. But the Convergence and the March pick off Mikey. So Crystal Maiden getting a kill. That was a really interesting dive. And the fact that Tinker went and... He went for the 1-1-1 build. Okay, so that's very interesting. Instead of getting two ranks of March, which what we, is what we typically see, Laser at four... He actually opted to get a rank of his laser and rocket earlier. I think with level 2 March, he might not have even died there. That was really strange. So 1-1, one, one, first blood does go to Korok, so he's going to have his bottle up. That's going to help his mid tremendously. But just in general, I don't know if that was really worth it for them. I mean, they committed a lot of heroes, so that took a lot of time. Mikey made his way all the way around through this ancient camp to go behind mid just to get that one kill, and he ended up paying with his life. So definitely not worth it for him. But I suppose in the meantime, they did force out a TP from the Crystal Maiden, which does allow Brax to kind of farm in this bottom line. He's only 7-5 and five at the moment, but he does have boots, so that's going to be nice of, nice for him. The only problem is this Wind Run only being level 1, 2.75 seconds as he gets Reality Rifted in. Leech is going to throw out the stun. It was only one second, though. Oh, man, that is so unfortunate. Really low stun right there. 6.16 TP's in. No mana for Sprout, though. A little bit of miscommunication right there. The CM threw off the Nova, but he was currently Wind Run. Nobody really has boots in this lane, not even the CK, so there's just no way they could chase him down. And another little bit of an overcommitment right there, this time by Dusa. Currently 1-1 one, one again, three minutes into the game. Saw the first blood. Elwin taking some harassment damage from the Void right there. And 616, man, he has no mana at all. He needs to be really careful about this top lane. Matrim has made his way to the lane with Chen. Going to be pushing this tower down probably very, very soon. Level 3 Edict already on this Lashrak. His middle lane, Korok is playing so aggressive, man. He just keeps walking right up into him. Level 2 March. Not going to use it, though. That's one thing that's interesting about going March build, especially when you're middle, is that, yeah, it's really great when there are multiple heroes there who are trying to dive you, but just in general... Ooh, chicken, be careful with that. Another void goes off. Top tower does fall to Quantic, but yeah, having the March build like this, you can't necessarily harass the Night Stalker that much. I mean, the March cooldown's like 30 seconds, so... With that being said, or 35 seconds rather, it's really, really difficult to do anything to him when that march is not up. So he should be able to farm fairly well. Brax throwing out some auto attack harassment bottom lane onto the CK. Top lane standing pretty far up here. Tide and Lashrak still just doing whatever they want, really. Arcane Boots finished on the Lashrak too. Still got that level 3 of Edict, and if they let a tier 2 drop this early, that could be a bit of a mistake. I mean, yeah, Nature's Prophet should be able to farm this lane after the fact, freeze it a bit try to recover, but with heroes like Titan Lashrak, they're just going to collapse to other lanes and try to keep applying pressure. We see rockets come out, but those rockets are only level 1. Gush was used as well, and Tinker is the one who actually comes from middle lane to prevent this push, and I like this choice quite a bit. Once again, you can pretty much march on almost every single creep wave. It's a lot like Sacrifice from Lich. It's a little bit late, but you can still prevent anything from really pushing in too hard. So Deuce changing up their lanes a little bit to react to that pressure being applied to top. Really good call by them. F4L's been doing his thing in the jungle here. 25 CS. Ooh, Hastrun actually is in Korok's bottle. If he wants to use it right here, he can try for a dive. There's the Malphys. He's probably just going to use it to get away, or is he going to go for the kill? The Sprout's there as well. He has nothing to get out of this. He's going to be stuck in there with Conversion. 616 trying to help Pot between auto attacks. F4L trying to save his teammate. I don't think it's going to work, though, and F4L needs to be careful as well. There's some rockets being blocked by the Conversions. Korok has nowhere to go. He's trying to run to the left, runs in. Oh my god, the Stout Shield! The Stout Shield procs are absolutely insane, and Korok is going to be able to TP out of here without dying. Holy crap, man. How did he live through that? That was absolutely unbelievable. If that was my Stout Shield, I would have just died instantly. I don't even know what to say. That was absolutely disgusting. Korok manages to get his second kill of the game. As there was another kill, too. Did I actually miss that? Okay, so bottom lane, CK ended up picking up the Windrunner during we saw that dive right there. When Korok had the Haster and picked off the uh, picked off the Furion, so six sixteen really struggling this game as well. Not too surprising though. Six and one, zero one score right now. He's really really having a rough time. Mikey's actually only level three. He's quite low level. Lashrak on the other hand level six, still maxing out his Split Earth and his Edict. Want to keep applying pressure to this top lane. 
as Elwyn is going to go ahead and throw out that march. And he's actually not got that great a CS either. He's only 18 and 5. So Farm in general, let's go ahead and check the gold graph here. So it is about 2,000 in favor of Quantic as well as 200 experience in favor of Quantic. Not really too big of a lead, but actually it's 6 minutes, maybe 7. That is quite a bit. As Korok, once again, looking like he wants to dive right here. F4L is nearby. There are conversions, but they're going to run out. There's not going to be a whole lot of damage. Mikey comes into the back. They're going to go for F4L instead. There's a silence and the void to follow. He gets sprouted in in the back. I think Mikey should be able to, to take this kill. He does have boots. F4L has boots too, though. Is he really going to be able to get back into tower range? He's juking to the side of the trees. They finally find him. Oh, but he black holes in tower range. Tower hitting Mikey. Here comes 616 once again. Sprouts F4L in with Korok. That is not what he wanted to happen, as he's going to get sent back into base by his teammate Chen as Chaos Knight once again gets another kill on bottom lane on the Windrunner. Brax is really going to have to play this carefully. He can't let himself keep dying like this, especially against the CK giving him those two kills as Korok comes in. No mana unleashed whatsoever. Does see him have any mana coming in from the side? She does have enough to do at least one spell. What is she going to try to do here as Leash uses his uh, health potion to get back up to high health? But here comes Super Joe in with the Edict and there's a Silence Void. Lushrak getting the kill right there. Now Leaf still doesn't have enough mana to TP. The Edict is going to spot him out for just a second. I don't think they noticed it, though. Super Joe running a little bit too far to the right-hand side. As they might be looking to dive here. Still three members from Quantic in the Radiant Woods right here. Oh, man. Matron's going to run right into F4L. F4L's in a lot of trouble. There's the net creep going off. And the Void. Who's going to die first? It is going to be Enigma. That is a dominating streak for Korok as he makes his way back towards the lane. Probably going to be looking to push this bottom tier tower. And, man, Chen barely got out of there. Honestly, I think his headdress might have just saved his life right there. As I think uh, Stan and Joe actually was nice enough to go ahead and throw him a health potion. So props out to him. Helping out his teammate. Oh man, there's been a lot of action all over the map. 4-5 to five right now in favor of Quantic. Only 8 minutes and 30 seconds into the game. I've hardly had time to even breathe. As Quantic is poised to take this bottom tier tower. Middle lane, we have a Sprout onto Mikey as well. He does not have anything to eat his way out of this. Oh, there's a Reality Rift in the freeze in place. Chaos Knight being played by Leash, getting that killing spree. 3-0 right now, has his treads finished already. And a Bracer on top of that, so likely going to be making that into a drum. As bottom lane, Windrunner, Chen, and Lashrak all still looking to push at this tier 2. And this could be the first tower of the game. If Deusa manages to pick this off, but I don't think we're going to see that. Mikey actually cancels his TP, so he's going to have to run all the way back from base. Okay, so we are going to see a tower trade here. I thought that Quantic might try to defend it, but with that canceled TP from Mikey, they're definitely not going to contest it. Kill goes to F4L, playing that Enigma. Up to 900 gold, as Brax does secure the Tier 2 bottom in favor of Quantic. At this point in the game, really haven't felt the presence of Tinker so much. He does have two ranks of his rocket now. Maxed out that march, and Quantic is just going into the base, man. They just don't care. Super Joe has that Edict Pop. Going to see the Wildkin throw out a tornado. Probably do some scouting. A little bit of extra damage. And this base tower is taking a lot of damage, man. They can't keep letting this happen. They need to, at some point, try to commit to a team fight as middle lane Mikey eventually drops again. So Mikey, after canceling his TP, trying not to die, eventually goes back mid and dies anyway. That is really unfortunate for him. Just caught it at the tail end right there, right as his corpse was hitting the ground. Very unfortunate for him. I think that he is 0-4. Oh, Mikey. Mikey has not had the start that he has won in this game. He is basically the entirety of Quantic's deaths at this point. That is definitely unfortunate. Oh, wow. Sentry is going to spot out Leash here. That is very unfortunate for him, too. Not going to be able to get any kind of gank off as a Roshan attempt is coming out here from Quantic as well. Whew. All right. Sorry about that. Had to take a little bit of an inhale here. First time I think this game I've gotten a chance to do that. Might not have another opportunity. Warding being done here by Maestrom to kind of secure their Roche kill. It is dropping pretty slow. Super Joe doesn't have that much mana. He does have a Perseverance on top of his point booster. Now with those arcane boots. Tide still looking at regular boots. Not even level 6 yet. Only level 5, man. He is really struggling. Brax looking at power treads as well. 1,500 gold saved up. Maestrom getting closer to his mech. About 350 gold away. As Korok has his urn and his magic wand. On top of his bottle, and he is going to get the Aegis right there. Not sure if he's going to go for the tankier build. Maybe go something like a BKB straight up with F after the treads, rather. To kind of just walk in and try to tank everything. I know March of the Machine still goes through BKB, and so does Black Hole. But at the very least, it would negate a heck of a lot of damage coming out from Deuce's lineup. And I'm really just shocked that Quantic has been this dominant this early in the game without Tide even having his ult. 
that's something that you don't typically see. This is just completely attributed to Korok having a great start. He's 4-0 right now, only 34 CS, which isn't really, honestly, even good. That's actually quite low, but just in general, he's gotten a lot of kills, been really active on the map, allowing his team to get towers. And this is just Quantic's playstyle, man. They love playing aggressive. They love getting any kills where they can, making something happen out of it. And in this case, right now, the two tier towers we saw drop really early, top lane, tier 1 and tier 2, already dead. Even the base tower, basically, bottom lane, has been exposed at this point. So two lanes completely dead. Only one left really standing for Dusa, as his tier 1 is at about half HP. Going to see some nukes being traded right here in middle lane. Bloodstone already finished on Lashrak. Holy cow, as he gets Reality Rifted into the entirety of Dusa right now. Oh, nice shackle, though, from Brax. And Super Joe is going to be able to get away because of that. Rockets go off. Oh, no, he's not. Reality Rifted back in. Four seconds stun. F4L picks up a kill. Wow, the Reality Rift range is a lot bigger than I gave it credit for as a haste is activated by Korok. Quantic is going to probably want to turn around in this. There is a march up, though. Another Shackle at latches 616. F4L gets silenced, and Korok is going in, but he's taking so much damage from the march. He gets sprouted in as well. Nothing to break this again, but Brax helps him out. Eats a tree, but Korok just wants to go back in as Chen comes in from the side with the neck creep, and there goes CM. Now 16, 616 in a lot of trouble as well. More rockets being dealt, but man, not enough damage to kill Korok, man. Just all over the map. Action, 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 non-stop. 7-7, seven seven, completely tied up in terms of kills, as Korok does not look like he is done here quite yet. Wants to go for Elwynn, but he's going to be forced back. He is earning up here. Elwynn needs to be careful. He's going to throw out the Void. F4L does have stun mana and black hole, though. Conversion's going to be enough to scare off Korok, though, in the meantime, as his first tier tower middle, one of the last outer tier towers remaining from Dusa Falls. Really, really well done here so far by Quantic, just applying consistent pressure. Almost 7,500 gold lead for them at this point. Over 1,500 experience. And this is looking pretty bad for Deuce at this point in time. They need to try to get together, make some decent team fights happen. It's just the problem is Firan has been so quiet this game, as has the Tinker. The Tinker is a hero where typically, once he gets his bots, he's just all over the map, pushing side lanes and stuff. But that plays right into Quantic's lineup, honestly. They have heroes like Night Stalker who can completely punish you for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. And you have to just assume that Quantic can anticipate where you're going to be before you're there, as we're going to see a Glyph popped. Korok gets sprouted once again, frozen inside a tower range. Tower is not hitting him, though. March doing a little bit of damage, but it's not going to be enough to stop the tower from falling. More rockets going out. Korok having to pop an urn on himself right there. And Brax picks up that tower kill, so absolutely zero outer tier towers standing, as Brax is going to go ahead and pick up one more CS before Chen sends him back to the base. 14 minutes in. Mech finished on F4L right now. They need to try to make something happen, man. This is looking so scary for them. They've given away so much in terms of map control and gold at this point that I don't know if they can really come back from it. Going to see what Korok decides to make here. He is at 3,400 gold sitting on it. Hasn't even finished his boots. Still looking at the same items he's had since pretty much the 4 or 5 minute mark. Gets another illusion rune. 616. Sitting in the jungle doing his thing. He is 2-2-2-1. Two, 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 that is an interesting skill build. So we opted to get an extra rank of Sprout. Maybe it's because no one has really had any Tangos or a Quelling Blade on Quantic. I mean, that is, is definitely the case. And if he's leveling it just based on that, then that's a really heads-up play. But don't typically see that. Usually either max a Teleport or the Treants first to make sure that you can either farm faster or be at more teamfights. And I suppose since the teamfights haven't been going too well for Deuce at this point, can't really blame him for not getting any extra points in that teleport. Oh, middle lane. Lashrak going to be in some trouble. He actually gets stunned right before the Reality Rift goes off. The Nova does clip him, but it's not going to be enough. He's able to phase boot away, teleport in from Elwyn to try to add some extra pressure here. But absolutely no kill. That was a crazy lucky stun coming out from the Lashrak. If he did that on purpose, man, high five to you because that was a smoke CK. I think he was just stunning for the CS and happened to hit the CK just because. But ended up saving his own life, and I'm sure he is... Uh, Pretty happy about that. Tide finally managing to get past level 6 here. He's actually level 8, so he's caught up quite a bit. He's got his max rank of his anchor smash. Got the ultimate up now, along with Gush. Sitting on some mana boots. Smoke on top of that and a ward. Let's check out Brax here. So Brax opted to go straight for the pipe. I really like that. They want to try to end the game as soon as humanly possible. They don't want to give CK the chance to make it to that later stage in the game. Tinker is also very, very difficult to deal with. If he does get a lot of items up, he becomes very tanky. Just a significant threat can chain hex people too if he ends up getting the scythe. As we're going to see a shackle on L1 in the bottom lane. Brax under the power shot. There's a void as well. Pipe is popped. He uses the bite onto Korok, but I don't think it's going to be enough. 
Brax does go ahead and secure the kill, but now Brax in trouble, gets Reality Rifted in. Leech on some auto attacks. There's a Chen heal, but are they going to be able to get away? I don't think so. Korok has basically just said, I can't save you, man. I am sorry. Oh my god, he almost actually got away. Unbelievable, as Korok might have overstayed his welcome just a second here. Another four second stun goes off onto the Night Stalker. Korok in a lot of trouble, and nighttime ends as well. Here's a stun coming out from Super Joe on the Void on the Leech. Is he going to fall? Nice dodge on the Black Hole from Super Joe. Nice timing. Backs out right away. Not getting caught by that, but Korok does have that Aegis. They're going on 616 now. There's the urn in the void to follow. One more claw auto attack from Night Stalker. Gets the kill. Now F4L retreating back to base. Is he going to be able to make it in time as the rest of Quantic is soon to follow behind their Lashrak? And they might be looking to go ahead and just push this bottom lane and maybe even try to Rax. Tidehunter has his ultimate up once again. First time I think I'm going to see him used to this game. Mikey, poor guy. Mike is a good friend of mine. I just can't help but rag on him because it makes me smile that he's having such a rough game. I guess that makes me a bad friend, but you know what? Every once in a while, you're just not going to have the greatest game. Oh, man. Absolutely crazy game so far. Once again, Chen does have that mechanism. Korok still actually hasn't spent any money. Oh, no. Yes, he did. Never mind. As we're going to see Super Joe taking quite a bit of damage. Reality rifted into the base. He's going down. Standing in the Midnight Pulse. A little bit of a late Ravage. Manages to clip two. FRL taking some damage as well. Korok forced back out of the base because of the March of the Machines. And Mikey has gotten away with almost no HP whatsoever. Net creep going off onto FRL. But there's a... A rally Rift onto Brax here. Brax in some trouble. Pops the pipe. Don't think it's going to be enough, though, as Mikey does secure the kill on Crystal Maiden as well. 616 trying to TP out of the Sprout, but he gets silenced and earned as well. Anchor Smash attempt from the high crowd, but it doesn't actually hit anyone as the earn does finish off. 616 now Leash in some trouble as well. Korok going back in. There's another Malphite to try to peel him off his teammate. BKB popped, though. That's what he spent his money on. March of the Machines coming in, though, and it looks like it will end up killing Korok. Oh, Chen 2. 9 HP. Elwin gets stunned by the Split Earth. There's the Pulse Nova and Super Joe gets another kill for his team. I can't help but think that was a buyback. I just saw Super Joe die. I definitely think he did buy back there. Chen, though, getting out of there with no HP whatsoever. Korok, as expected, rushed that BKB during that team fight. Has enough money to finish his treads as soon as he reses. And this bottom tier tower looks like it might actually go down here. Chen Eel goes off. Oh, nice! Double stun and reality rift. Three, or two second stun on the Lashrak. Looks like F4L and CM are both going to be able to get away as Lashrak is not going to be so lucky. Gets laser to the face and eventually falls to Tinker. Now at least chasing onto this Chen as well. There's a Sprout and another two second stun doing quite a bit of damage as Matrim is going to go down. Oh man, what a nice turnaround coming out for Dusa. They desperately needed that. I think they ended up getting five kills there or something like that before that fight ended. Just complete insanity so far in this first game of today. I, I don't even, like, know what to say anymore. This is just absolutely craziness. Huh. <sighs> Get another second to actually inhale here. Brax sitting at this top lane currently. Two and four. Not doing so great, but he does have that pipe up once again. 19 minutes into the game. His farm's actually still doing quite well. Mikey in the jungle right now. Managed to get himself on the board. That was definitely a cute attempt in the anchor smash of the high ground. Unfortunately, it didn't make contact with anyone, but was enough to uh, give him a little bit of scare, you know? Sometimes you just gotta try to anchor smash from like 600 range. It's pretty big, but not quite that big. Chaos Knight sitting on his drum right now. Level 10. He's only got 38 CS at 20 minutes. That's actually incredibly low. I am really shocked at that, that his farm is actually not that great, as we're going to see Super Joe get Reality Rifted in here. Leash might be in some trouble. There's a Nova going off. Tinker going to TP into the range creep. Two seconds stun onto Super Joe. They're going to turn this around, and he is in so much trouble, taking a ton of damage from the March of the Machines and the combo from Elwind. As 616 TP is in well just to find Mikey. Throws out the Sprout. Now, he looks like he might be in some trouble as well. Ooh, and never mind. Was that a Fog stun? That couldn't have been. Did he just cancel that? We're going to see Brax making his way in from the back. Oh, man. He's going to be in some trouble here, though. F4L is going to spot him out. Brax going to be forced to pop the Windrunner. Try to get out of here. Another TP coming in from Tinker. Can he get away in time? No, he can't. Reality Rift back in. Three seconds stun. And Quantic is just giving away free kills at this point. I am so confused as to why Brax decided to go that way of all places. Especially considering they had a ward here. I suppose they couldn't have seen the uh, Enigma outside of the base. But still, this is really, really interesting. Quantic at this point still has pretty much every tower. They've only lost one, only lost a tier one mid. But it really seems like they're kind of falling apart here and trying to get together and push. And with that being said, of course, still 10,000 gold ahead at this point. That's definitely no small number, but the experience is about dead even. And again, every time they push the base, this Tinker March of the Machines, man, having an Enigma with the Midnight Pulse on the ground, you walk into that, you're taking a ton of damage, even if you do have a Bloodstone at the 12 minute mark, by the way, which Super Joe managed to accomplish this game.
Very, very impressive by him. Let's check over some of the heroes on Deucer right now besides the CK. He is working his way towards that BKB, as we said before. Crystal Maiden, not really anything aside from wards. Not too surprising there. BKB actually almost finished on F4L, so that's going to be great for him. There is nothing on Quantic's team that can really stop him from black holing if he does have that BKB up. 616 manages to finish his 4 staff. And Taker's sitting on a staff of wizardry himself, so he's going to be making a 4 staff too. As it looks like Quantic wants to get in position here to do another Rosh attempt. And I actually like the choice that Brax made to TP top here. Anytime you're doing a Rosh attempt and you show a hero, it makes the other team at least double or think about it more than once. You know, it's like, well, there is a hero on the map. Are they really doing Rosh or are they not? In this case, though, we are going to see pings out from 616. So they definitely know that they are there, which means that if they choose to engage, that Quantic's going to be one hero down. Brax will get the nine on the top tower. But inside this Rosh pit, it is dropping very, very fast. Are they going to get there in time? This is going to be a huge engagement. Korok is going to get the Aegis. He walks right in. He's going to pop the BKB. Black Hole only hits one hero, though. Only hits Mikey. Gets canceled right away. There's a counter ravage. Huge mistake right here from Dusa. As we do see Chen and Lashrak actually fall. So actually doesn't look like it's too, too bad. Korok managed to pick up a kill. BKB finally wears off. Leech going to throw out the Reality Rift once again. But I believe he will pay with his life. Currently two for two. Somebody bought back. I believe it was Lashrak once again. Korok going to spot out Leech and ends up getting a kill. So yeah, it ultimately was a little bit of a mistake right there. F4L using his Black Hole a bit prematurely. Didn't manage to catch every single hero that he needed to. It's so, so difficult to get Black Holes off in situations like that. Not having a blink in some cases. It might have helped him out a bit. But at the same time, if he had a blink and no BKB and no mech, then he would have been very susceptible to dying in the early phases of the game. This is just absolute insanity. I really felt like Dusa had to engage there, especially in a 4v5 situation. They tried to make it happen. Unfortunately, the black hole just wasn't quite what it needed to be. <clears throat> oh, Korok's going to get 4 staff into the base. Go on L1. He does get frozen. Still has the Aegis, though. He should be okay for the moment. There is no BKB, though. Even when he comes up, there's the Pipe Pop Shackle. Not going to make contact to anything on F4L. As Korok is still getting auto-attacked down by the conversions. Oh, he barely lives. 16 HP. Earns himself as he walks out of the base. As you can see, just counter warts all over the place in the top of this hill. Want to make sure that there's not going to be any invis shenanigans going on. Or at the very least, any wards. <clears throat> so, Metrum is working his way towards a scepter. He's got his point booster up here. Almost level 11. He's doing pretty well. That one going to throw out the laser and the rockets on a Mikey. Pretty much force him straight back to the base. A 616 actually TPs into the back here. Are they going to be able to get him? Mikey doesn't have... Oh, he does have a forest staff, but there's another rocket going off. And a Fury and Ultimate too, but perfect timing on the mech right there from the Chen. Manages to save his teammate. As the rest of them are pretty much going to be forced to fall back. And yeah, I just really am shocked at the low CS. I don't think I've opened it this entire game, but... Yeah, the CK sitting in a 2v1 lane against a solo Windrunner has 40 CS. That's definitely interesting. Um, not sure if it's because he's been active in fights. He is... 5-1-9. That's almost every single kill basically on his team that he's been involved in, so he's at least been active. But his farm is not quite where I think it needs to be at this point. In terms of overall gold, Quantic still has a very commanding lead. They actually have not been trailing at any point in this game whatsoever in terms of gold. 12,000 for them at the moment. 3,000 experience for them as well. More rockets going off in middle lane by Elwind. Throwing out some march to try to counter push the wave here. And with Korok still having the Aegis, I can't help but think that Quantic is going to want to push again. I mean, these bottom racks still are very exposed. Full HP, but all you really have to do is walk into the base and go ahead and solidify yourself one good team fight, and you've basically racks at this point. It is getting to the point in the game, too, where if you win a team fight at your opponent's base, they're going to be dead for a longer period of time, which could potentially allow Quantic to push two racks instead of just one. And that's always going to be something that's on Deuce's mind as this game rolls out, is the later the game gets, the more important those team fights are. If you don't manage to win them past like the 30 to 35 minute mark, your heroes are gone for a long time. And I think a couple of heroes actually do have buyback money from Dusa, so that's definitely good for them. Does CK actually have buyback? Oh yeah, he's only 700 gold. He should be fine. Mikey smoking up once again towards his top lane. It really looks like they're trying to set up a gank on this Tinker. They're anticipating him TPing to this lane. They want to try to pick him off, but I really don't think it's going to happen. There is a ward out here as well. Mikey and Super Joe kind of hovering around, waiting to see if he is going to go to the wave, but not going to be the case. So this smoke is basically just wasted time and wasted farm as well. Super Joe not really getting any of those CS. More pings towards the bottom lane. And Deuce is in a really rough spot here. They're basically confined to their base the entire time. Their vision is so low. Like, they have basically one ward, the one other ward in the jungle that was right here just expired. So basically, they only have one rune spot ward and a counter on top of one of the aggressive warding spots that Quanta could possibly abuse here. 
Overall, another great performance by Quantic so far. Dusa trying to do what they can to get themselves back into the game. Once again, if you guys are just tuning in, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Draskal, casting the ECAL North and South American Group Stage Tournament. This is a $3,000 tournament for those of you who don't know. This is Dusa, who is already inside, taking on Quantic of the Dire side. And things have kind of fallen into a bit of passivity here. Not really too surprising. Quantic kind of taking a deep breath after the last couple of fights. Those two questionable pushes bottom lane made them think twice about just blindly rushing in again without at least an Aegis at this point. And since they're pretty much free to farm all over the map, whereas do so, like I said, they have to sit basically right outside of their base and huddle together for warmth because they are just scared right now. BKB finish on the Enigma, though, so that's definitely great for them. Korok still kind of stalking his way through the jungle. He wants to try to find somebody out here. It is nighttime. So they do find anyone it is going to be beneficial to them. Try to get a gank off before they can push down mid, but nice warding being done by Deuce. They're going to spot it out. I already saw the pings, and I'm really actually kind of shocked that no one has bought a gem yet. Typically, when you're in this dominant of a position, if you buy just one gem, it'll pay for itself in the course of probably 10 to 12 minutes. Assuming the other team is actively trying to ward to keep themselves safe, uh, anytime you find a ward, that's basically 100 gold that the other team has lost towards your gem. Right now, looks like Leash and Tinkerbell sitting in the top lane. CK trying to farm up his BKB before the next team fight. Needs to be careful, though. All right, there he goes. He is finally going to TP back. It wasn't Creep Vision, so Quantic's not going to be too hard pressed to chase right there. Got some more pinging being done. Korok apparently recognizing that there is, in fact, a ward on top of that hill because everybody from Dusa fell back as soon as they were basically running on the opposition side. <clears throat> No real big items have been completed recently, except for a four staff. Tinker finally picking that up. Saw Reality Rift on a creep right there, at least trying to get as much farm as he can. So Tinker also could be working his way towards that Hex, which is going to be great for him. Three heroes from Quanta currently sitting middle lane as Korok finally finished his Aghanims. So he basically has nighttime map hack now. If you see the big circle on the minimap, it covers a heck of a lot of ground. You're basically never going to juke a hero like Night Stalker with a Scepter. It's just not possible. It's going to help him out, especially when going into the base. Try to ensure that the Enigma doesn't farm up something tricky like a Blink and end up sitting in one of the side juke spots where you can possibly get a good black hole to defend your base. <clears throat> As it's probably one of the only ways that I believe Deuce is going to be able to defend at this point, but they are giving Tinker quite a bit of time. If he gets up a Sheet Man, game's not over until it's over. So we're going to see 616 TP to the top lane. Oh, wow, that was actually really bad timing. Unfortunately, Super Joe spots him out a bit too late here. Not going to be able to find him. He is trying to run forward. Not sure if he even spotted him necessarily. CK is pinging the map. He's like, get the heck out of here, man. What are you doing? You're crazy. You're crazy. Mikey and Matrim in this bottom lane, pushing it up once again. Going to go ahead and fall back now. Tied level 12 at this point. Chen also level 12. Getting closer to his scepter as well. Once he gets that scepter, I think it's something like, what, 20 second cooldown? Or 30, yeah. 30 second cooldown on the Hand of God. That's just absolutely insane. Free heals. You basically never have to go back as long as you have enough mana boots on your team to sustain it. And they have one, two... Only two mana boots right now. Oh, no. Leash trying to TP out. There's Power Shot for Vision. Can he get the Shackle? Can he get the Shackle? No Shackle at all! Oh, man! Did Brax lose Vision there or what? I'm not sure what that was about. Super Joe trying to throw out the Split Earth, but unfortunately couldn't get Leash in time. He managed to get back to the base. That is a huge missed pickoff right there. Anytime you can delay a hero from getting a big item, which, by the way, he is 7 gold away right now from his BKB. If they had killed him right there, delayed his BKB, that would have been so bad for Dusa. There we go. He finally finishes it right there. Very, very unfortunate play right there from Quantic. I really thought that that power shot granted in vision. I mean, that's the only reason to use it in that spot. Try to spot him out before the TP goes off. Throw out the shackle. Go ahead and get yourself a kill. Unfortunately, it didn't work out that way. F4L making his way up here towards Brax. Wants to try to pick up a kill of his own, but not going to happen. So Brax just going to go ahead and fall back. Matrim and Mikey. The double M's here. Bottom lane. Keeping everything pushed as much as they can. And, you know, it's one thing to keep constant pressure on a team, but basically they're pushing up the wave that allows Tinker and CK to essentially farm it at this point. They haven't really tried to engage in a team fights, and Korok has had an Aegis for quite a while now. I actually checked the Roche respawn time, so he's going to be up in like a minute or two. I'm not really sure if this is necessarily the best call, as once again we see Brax getting forced back here out of this top lane. Korok's still farming away, farming some Ancients right now, not sure what he's going to buy next. 
He does have that BKB and Ags, though, as mentioned previously. That one getting closer to his Hex. He needs about 700 gold for that ultimate orb, then on top of that he'll have to buy his Void Stone. And then he will indeed have up his Sheep Stick. 616 has basically been sitting on the same items like the entire game. Pull out the creep score here for just a second. Yeah, 59 CS for him, only 63 for CK. I actually think that is some of the lowest creep score I've ever seen in a 31 minute game, especially for a Furion. I know most Furions who play in competitive matches don't just spam their ultimate for CS. It's definitely a common thing, but man, his farm is just really suffering right now. I'm actually surprised CK even has a BKB, given the low CS that he has. Brax continuing to push top lane, picks up an ultimate orb of his own, as there's going to be another Roche attempt here by Quantic relatively soon. Oh, smoke up. They might be able to catch Mikey. There's a four staff on F4L. Can he get it before he goes to the high ground? No, he can't. No vision. Trance going to be running out there. They spot an F4L, but now Quantic is onto it, man. They know that they want to try to contest this Roche. Great timing on that smoke. As you can see, Roshan has basically just respawned here, so they forced him out. Didn't want to give Korok another free Aegis. This would have been Cheese 2, by the way. Third Roche of the game. Korok still farming away middle, man. At one point, they're going to have to try to account for the Korok. And Super Joe as well, honestly. Once he gets a BKB, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with as well. Korok popping his level 3 ultimate. Shiva's... Oh, wow, wow. He went for a Shiva's and not a Hex. Okay. So he went for Shiva's instead of a Hex at this point. Um, That's definitely not a bad choice. I think that he can die pretty easily to the spam nuke that Quantic has right now. I mean, Avoid, Gush, and Lashrak here. Pretty much going to go down straight away. I think maybe the extra HP of the Hex would have been better, and obviously the crowd controls. We're going to see Matrim get caught out here. Chen in a lot of trouble. BKB pop. There's the heal. CK just doesn't do that much damage, but he's going to get help from his team, and Matrim will eventually fall right here. Oh, Ravage only hits one, and a nice black hole from F4L and Reality Rift back in. They're going on Super Joe pretty hard here. Lashrak will be able to eventually get out. Mikey with no HP whatsoever. March is just doing so much damage to the rest of Quantic being forced back, as Mikey will eventually drop to Leech, but I think he's going to with his life here no he's not actually he's gonna be able to run away as they are chasing Korok around on the side of the jungle right here Korok going back in onto Elwind Pulse Nova is still activated by the Lashrak he finally runs out of mana the laser goes off but it's not enough to get a kill as Korok picks up a double kill during that team fight FRL trying to retreat now he does not have a blink Urn is used. Are they going to be able to line up a stun up for trying to juke? But it's just so hard to juke with that slow on. And he's going to be dropped here too. So a 4 for 2 ultimately at the end of when the dust settles. And Quantic looks like they are in a pretty good position to possibly push this bottom lane for the first time successfully. Also important to note that they did that without Roche. I mean, that's completely shocking to me that the one team fight that Quantic actually decided to take, they didn't have Roche. And I guess they had to take it because the Chen got caught, but... Really interesting stuff so far. They're actually not going to choose to push at this point. Going to go ahead and take a bigger advantage by running back and securing themselves pretty much another free team fight win by going ahead and trying to take Roche. Or they might just be going to top lane farm. I could be completely wrong. Double damage can be picked up here by the Night Stalker. No bottle, though, so he's not going to be able to pop it for Roche in itself. But with that, they might just go ahead and try to go for it. The Ravage from Mikey was pretty good. Um, really nice black hole from F4 out there. Only caught two heroes, but they were able to apply quite a bit of pressure. I'm not sure if it was the best call to go on Lashrak there. I mean, Lashrak at this point has 1,900 health. He has almost as much health as Korok on a Night Stalker. I mean, they dropped the Chen pretty much straight away, and they chose to go on one of the tankier heroes. Although, I suppose, in that same sense, you could say that every hero on Quantic is relatively tanky at this point. Tied at 1,500 health. Even Matrim on Chen lived for a very, very long time. <clears throat> Aegis is going to go to Korok here. Did he pick up the cheese too? Wow, greedy player spotted. Is he going to trade the cheese to anyone? Probably the Shrek, I would assume. Yeah, okay, he's going to make some inventory room here. Korok going to go ahead and hand him the cheese. So now the Shrek is going to be that much more devastating in team fights. His mana pool actually ran out during the last fight. That's a bit surprising. I think he just left his Pulse Nova on the entire time. But now he doesn't even have to worry about it, man. He's like, yeah, whatever. I'm going to leave Pulse Nova on for like a day. Doesn't even matter. I got cheese. Tidehunter picking up a Perseverance, so he is likely going to be making a Refresher, which double Ravage in a team fight is going to be so difficult to deal with. Only one BKB again on Deuce at this point. Tinker not opting to get a BKB at himself. That's typically one of like the fourth or fifth items you normally build on him, but I really feel like he's going to have to make one next if he wants to be effective in team fights. 
Oh, Korak getting spotted out here. Really good reaction time on the BKB. Should be able to get himself away. He's actually going to turn around on this. Brax coming up from the top, but we're going to see Tinker TP to the top lane too. But here comes the Lashrac and the Titan from the back. There's a nice shackle though on a 616 and F4L. I don't see the black hole yet. It's 10 seconds on cooldown. No black hole for this at all. Another stun going on to Korak. He might lose Aegis here, but CM ends up dropping first along with Furion and CK. Now F4L and a huge amount of trouble here. There's a gush. Windrunner picking up that kill as well. And that is a four for nothing. They got the Aegis, but that is definitely not worth it. I don't know if that was the right call by Deusa, man. They really were trying to press the issue when basically you're on the other team's side of the map. I suppose they were going for the surprise factor right there, but not having Black Hole and trying to engage into that team, especially when Korak has a BKB, that is um, questionable play to say the least, and it's going to end up costing them a lot. Furion and Sam will be up soon, but I mean, in reality, what are they going to do against this push? Lashrak well, has his BKB and a cheese still. He didn't even have to use it for that team fight. And once again, just going for the really tanky targets. It's just so hard for Dusa to go on anyone and really take them out. As we're going to see Super Joe actually take quite a bit of damage from the March of the Machines. Trying to juke it out here. Doesn't want to keep getting owned by him. Rocket Spam being done in middle lane to try to get Korok and Mikey off this tower. And a March being thrown out as well. So, as bad as the teamfight went, they're still doing a very good job of defending their base at this point. So we are going to see the rotation bottom, though. These Raxes have been exposed for probably the last 20 minutes of the game or so. TP coming in from F4L. He does have his black hole now. Are they going to try to fight this? F4L really looks like he wants to. Do they have Ravage? No, they don't. Only 60 seconds on cooldown. They could try to turtle out a bit if they want to. Come back when Ravage is up. Try to go ahead and secure them another fight. Didn't have to waste the cheese once again. Oblivion Staff on Mikey, so he's getting very, very close to his refresher at this point. As Brax is looking like he's only a couple of creep kills away from his hex, and that's going to be a huge deal. They managed to get heroes like CK, Tinker, or even Enigma in a hex before the Enigma is allowed to BKB in Black Hole, and that's going to be pretty good for Quantic. Check over the gold here one more time. Oh, 20,000 in favor of Quantic. 25,000 experience. I think it's going to be pretty hard pressed for Quantic to lose the game at this point. Not really being reflected by the score, though. 19 to 24 at just a 38 minute mark. Once again, this is Dusa. Taking on Quantic in the Group 1 stages of the ECALS North and South American $3,000 tournament hosted by Machinima. My name is Draskal. Thank you guys for joining us for this cast so far. We're going to see Dusa try for the very first time to push down a little bit of middle lane. Oh man, heart picked up by Night Stalker. Let's check his health. 3,500 HP. That's a little bit ridiculous. I don't think he's going to be dying anytime soon as Brax does finish his hex as well. So I would expect in the next couple of minutes that Quantic is going to be feeling fairly confident in themselves to at least try to push down that middle lane again. There has been a tower there for so freaking long, and they just absolutely have not wanted to go for it. We can actually see offensive warding here done right outside of the middle and bottom lanes. They just aren't trying to end the game. I don't know. Maybe they don't think they're as far ahead as they are. Maybe it's just that hard to push into a tinker. I'm not really sure what the case is, as in the meantime, tinker does pick up his ultimate orb, so he is likely going to be making that into a hex and probably opting for a BKB after that. Night Stalker level 20. Doing his thing in the jungle. And this is so funny. Anytime there are three heroes from Quantic farming their enemy's jungle. That's definitely not a good spot to be in if you're in Deuce's Shoes. They're like, well, we would like to farm, but unfortunately it's not going to be that efficient because we can't even go into our jungle. We do have one ward on top of the hill here. It's going to fade another 48 seconds, but... It's looking pretty scary. And Enigma opting not to get a Blink Dagger. A little bit interesting. I thought it would be a lot easier for him to actually get decent Black Holes if he got a Blink instead of an Ultimate Orb. Apparently he's favoring stats. Maybe he wants to go for the Hex instead. I don't know if that's really the right call at this point. I would imagine that Quantic eventually is going to get a little bit impatient, try to force a team fight, get a little bit clumped up, and then rely on a big Black Hole to go ahead and turn it around. And I feel like that's one of the only things that they're going to be able to do at this point. Power shot spam on the top lane, courtesy of Brax. He's got another 1,400 gold, level 19 win runner, and he has made his way back into this game in big strides right now. 210 CS, 5-5-4, five, five, and four. not the greatest KDA, but fortunately for him, he does have quite a bit of creep kills. And just, in general, look at the difference in creep kills right now. 173, 212, 216, 146, and 139 for Quantic. Then you have 167, 23, 88, 71, 234. The only person or only people on Dusa who are even in the ballpark of the farm on Quantic are the Enigma and Elwind who's playing the tankers. So just in terms of lane efficiency and overall use of your time, you can definitely tell that Quantic has a bit more experience in this particular game. 
It's definitely hurt Dusa a lot to not maximize their farm in some cases. I think their lanes are actually pretty strong. They just didn't quite utilize it the way that I think they wanted to. Korok coming in from the side here. Maybe looking to try to pick somebody off. As Dusa is currently sitting inside of their base. Going to see a smoke up. I'm not sure if that was Envision or not. It is nighttime. That one's going to go ahead and push out here with his double Shivas and march to the machines. No one from Quantic decided to go on the tanker. Going to force death himself back into the base. TP to the well and get himself some HP. Korok now with an eye. Feel like it's a little bit late, but nonetheless, eyes and I. And I'm the Night Stalker too because of the fact that he does have that vision all around. He can counter ward basically for his team. He has to have somebody else kill it, obviously, but he can basically run around and say, hey, there's a ward here, kill this, kill that. No more warding really going to be coming out from Medusa at this point. 41 minutes into the game. Quantic poised to take this game pretty decisively, I might add. They could also be turtling out another Roche. Who knows? Let's see how long it's going to be. Eh, about three or four minutes left. More pressure being applied to this middle lane. Mikey actually just four staffs himself in and he ravages. He hits everyone basically except for 616. There's a double ravage. See him in a lot of trouble and it looks like two down before anything really happens in favor of Deuce's 616 in trouble now. Trying to TP out. Not going to work. Leash manages to make it to the well just in time. Tinker and CK, the only two alive right there from Dusa. And everybody just died so fast that I didn't even have a chance to call who it was. But three for nothing, just like that. Quantic looks like they're going to take mid. Probably going to rotate bottom after the fact and likely take this game. Unbelievable performance so far from Quantic. Got to give props to Dusa for holding out as long as they did. Especially considering the just insurmountable goal advantage, man. 25,000 in favor of Quantic over 30,000 experience. Really, really well done by both teams. Unfortunately, Dusa going to be dropping this game over two racks down. I don't think there's really too much else to say. Korok is just so far at this point as well. He is just tanking the tower. 78.4 health regen whenever he's done in combat from another hero. Mikey and Mitch are making their way over here too to help him out. The refresher from Mikey, man, came in huge. Beautiful four staff double ravage right there. Going to get reality rifted in. BKB popped by both Korok and the CK. Here comes a TP in from F4L. Can they get a decent black hole here? Here it comes. It is going to hit three. Unfortunately, it hits three really tanky heroes as Brax is throwing out the focus fire onto F4L. We're going to see Leech trying to make his way back to base. There's a gush as well. Looks like F4L and Tide are going to drop at the same time along with the Crystal Maiden. And now Edict still doing quite a bit of damage. Oh, nice four staff out of the base here by 616 trying to juke. He is silenced, though, not going to be able to TP. Pulse Nova, one extra auto attack, and the Edict from Lashrak going to be enough to solidify that kill. Buyback from Windrunner, and we're likely to see the last set of racks here drop in favor of Quantic, and hopefully the GG. Well, I, shouldn't say, I, I shouldn't say hopefully, but I would imagine Dusa, after losing team fights like that, and pretty much the entire base going down, that they would call GG at this point. But that's going to be Megas, everybody. Once again, this was just game one of today. We are going to be bringing you one more best of one. Right after this match, it is going to be Pain taking on Acer. There's a GG coming out from Dusa and Quantic as well. So that's going to be the end of this game, guys. I want to thank you guys so much for joining my name. My name is Draskal. Sorry, I'm like totally dry over here. I haven't had a chance to like breathe or drink anything this entire game. One of my very first solo casts. So I want to thank you guys so much for joining me. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Maybe a little bit longer than a couple of minutes, actually. And we'll be bringing you guys another game. It's going to be Pain taking on Acer for ECAL's $3,000 North and South America tournament. Sponsored by Machinima. And please stick around for more Dota 2 coming your way next.